I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com and Verizon's really taking the sub hundred dollar price point very seriously when it comes to 4G LTE devices. I'm here with the LG Lucid. Now this thing comes out on Verizon tomorrow, so March 29th for $99.99. Let's take a look at it in the unboxing, but first, some love to Best Buy Mobile because they hook us up with phones like this for use in our One Paul Bandit game, which we give away to you on the site. When you walk into Best Buy Mobile to get your LG Lucid, you'll walk out working. They'll help you set up your email, your web, your text, all of your contacts and more, so when you walk out the door, you're good to go at Best Buy Mobile. Special thanks to Verizon Wireless as well for hooking us up with a review unit. Let's take a look at the LG Lucid in the unboxing, which starts right now. With AT&T launching the Nokia Lumia 900 and some of these other carriers going for some pretty decent phones at the $100 price point, Verizon realizes, or most likely realizes at least, that it needs to catch up. Here's the LG Lucid. This thing is coming to stores on the 29th for $99.99, so a sub $100 4G LTE device. Now, this isn't the first one we've seen from Verizon. We saw the Pantech break out a couple of months ago, but when you really look at the specs of this device, you can see they're bringing some high-end specs to the mid-range price tier, which is really nice, again, considering the Lumia 900, considering the T-Mobile Galaxy S Blaze 4G, and more that are arriving on some of the other carriers. So you can see 4G LTE network certified, nice embossed box here, and a different box design actually for Verizon uh, in, the pa in comparison to what they've done in the past. So Lucid by LG, standard battery, of course, USB charger. And just to give you a rundown of the specs, 1.2 gigahertz dual core, processor, one gigabyte of RAM, and here's the device itself. It's got a five megapixel camera with 1080p HD video recording on the back. Of course, it has swipe technology as well. I'm going to remove this sticker so you can listen to it. Let's see if it makes a noise. No noise. That was lame. But here's the device itself, and then you can see on the side, a nice little design to it. Power button over here on the side. Get this kind of a chrome look on the sides. Volume rocker over here, something up here. Actually, I don't think that's a button. No, it's not a button. 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and like I said, five megapixel camera on the back. You've got four capacitive buttons down here. Now, out of the box, this thing has Android 2.3. It's upgradable to Android 4.0, though, according to the press release. SIM cards thing. Verizon, start here. Let's start here. We're going to take Verizon's word for it. We're going to open this up and see. Start here. Comienza aquí. Important consumer information. And in my favorite, información importante del consumidor. Consumer information about radio frequency, product safety and warranty information, stuff you're probably never going to read, but it's in there if you decide, you, know, you just get a kick where you're like, I really want to read something, you've got it in the box. There's typical stuff here, USB cable, which I don't know why they sealed it like that, because it's still sealed up. We'll pull it out of the box here, pull it out of the uh, plastic and take a look here. USB cable, and then your AC adapter module down here. Why do they do that? Take a look at that. Even though it's, see, it's still sealed up, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But hey, I'm sure they have their, uh, their reasoning. And an AC adapter module, pretty big AC adapter module at that with the USB input down there at the bottom. And then of course your, uh, your outlet right there. So you get some stuff in the box, not a whole lot, but again at a $100 price point, you're not going to get a ton of stuff in the box. I do kind of like the box design though. I mean, you know, obviously frees up some room for shelf space. Let's take a look at the device itself. Before we do that, let's undo this. Take a look at the battery. You have a 1,700 milliamp hour battery in this bad boy. 1,700 milliamp hours, micro SIM card, and we'll... Put that back in, start it up, and power it on, and take a look. So, all in all, in a pretty decent looking device, and again, the specs, might have high mid-range, low high-end device. I hate to say 1.2 gigahertz dual core is a uh, is mid-range by any means, but you know, in comparison to what we're seeing now with quad core with the NVIDIA Tegra 3, and even some of the dual core Snapdragon things like 1.5 gigahertz, we're seeing some increases in processor speed, and you know, dual core processors around the one to 1.2 gigahertz range are quickly becoming kind of low high-end devices or high mid-range devices. This is going to make a great device for somebody perhaps that's moving up from a feature phone or moving up from a messaging phone or somebody that's coming from an older smartphone. They want that Android experience, but they don't want to spend $199 or $299 for the Galaxy Nexus or the HTC Resound or uh, some of the other 4G LTE superstars in Verizon's lineup. So you can see typical LG interface here, and it's loading up and searching for service. You've got that typical notifications bar down here and up here. Searching for networks, you've got a big Wi-Fi button like you do on the LG Spectrum, Verizon's high-end LG device. And then you have the sound, Bluetooth, GPS, airplane, and then edit shortcuts up at the top. Let's take a look at edit, actually, and see. Data enabled. Okay, yeah, let's enable some data. Let's do some data. Save. Make sure that's on and ready to go. And then we can come in here. And this is probably one of my favorite. I actually heard about this. And this is a cool widget. You've got a dialer widget on the home screen itself, so you really don't have to deal with the phone button anymore here. You can just dial directly from the dialer widget, and it loads it right up and dials for you. 
You see 611 dialing here, all your shortcuts so you get while you're in call. That's probably the coolest widget I've seen in at least six months. That's a neat little widget thing on the uh, on the home screen. But you've got five home screens here. And let's see if I can add additional ones. Let's go ahead and kick those seven in so we can get our seven home screens in typical uh, Android format, save for the usual Droid format because as you know they have five home screens. But out of the box you get the typical Verizon stuff here and the typical LG user interface that we've seen and it's going to be one of those interfaces you either love or hate. I've been pretty vocal, blah, pretty vocal, say that three times fast, pretty vocal about, you could probably say it three times fast, it's probably just me screwing that one up, but pretty vocal about my um, hate, or I wouldn't say hate, dislike for uh, LG's user interface in its present form. Now if you watch the Mobile World Congress videos, you've seen the new one that's coming to devices like the LG Optimus 4X HD, beautiful uh, interface. It really works well with Ice Cream Sandwich and I'd like to get some more hands-on time with it, but it seems much better. This current interface doesn't really do a whole lot for me. I think it's kind of poorly laid out, but you do get some Verizon Wireless stuff on this device. Amazon Kindle apps, Backup Assistant, Let's Golf 3, Mobile Hotspot, My Verizon Mobile, Plants vs. Zombies. It's pretty scary. Take a look at that. Look how scary that is. Vcast Tones, Vcast Navigator, and then everything's kind of organized here by news and search, tools, applications, media, and more. Let's go into messaging, take a look so you can see. Comes with a typical LG keyboard. It also comes with swipe pre-installed out of the box. And like any other Android device, you can download third-party keyboards from Google Play. I almost said Android Market, but I stopped myself. Google Play, and that's a nice little touch. A portrait and landscape keyboard there, and it looks a lot and actually sounds a lot like a, uh, another keyboard on the market. I won't actually say the name of the product, but you know what I'm thinking about. Looks and feels like that particular keyboard. So, you know, I've been a bit pretty vocal about this one as well. I don't think the autocorrect's fantastic on LG's keyboard, but you have swipe. It swipes your thing, and you can uh, take advantage of some of the ones in Android market also. But you've got that 4G LTE connectivity, so let's take a look at the browser and see how quickly that loads up. Otherwise, typical stuff here, Google+, Plus, and you'll see Google+, Plus and Google Messenger. Google's really making a push for Google Plus on a lot of these devices. We've seen it on the Galaxy Nexus, we've seen it on some of the upgrades to Android 4.0, most recently on the HTC Vivid on AT&T. With Android 4.0 coming in, you'll see those shortcuts on it as well. And now you're seeing it on the uh, LG Lucid. So it's kind of nice to see Google pushing their own social media platform there, and hopefully it'll uh, gain some more traction. If you're a fan of Google Plus, that's obviously a, uh, a good thing for you. And then typical media stuff here, smart share, music player, a lot of LG custom stuff. And you'll notice not only customizations in terms of the icons, but you'll see some LG specific applications as well. Share Genie, Smart Share, uh, Video Player, all kind of customized to fit LG's user interface. So we'll load up PhoneDog.com and take a look. Not phone doof, phone dog. Dot com and you can rank this phone as well. Go to PhoneDog.com slash rankings. If you bought this phone, you play with it for a couple of days, you absolutely love it. Rank it and let us know what you think. PhoneDog.com slash rankings. Now this phone comes out on the 29th, so tomorrow in Verizon Wireless stores for $99.99. So here's PhoneDog.com still loading, but you can see pinch to zoom, relatively responsive, and portrait to landscape transitions are nice and fast. So that's a nice benefit there. So it's a four inch touchscreen display. And so to me, four inches is a nice sweet spot for a lot of people. I think, you know, we're kind of getting into that point now with the big phones where 4.3 might be, I might have to make an adjustment to that over the next couple of months and say 4.3 is the new sweet spot. I think between 3.5 on the iPhone and 5.3 on the Galaxy Note, 4.3 might be the new sweet spot, but still very pocketable, very easy to fit in the hand and all in all pretty good looking device in terms of design. And hey, it has a dual core processor, so things like web browsing, texting, all pretty quick, pretty easy, with little to no lag, at least so far, in the unboxing. Much more coverage to come on the LG Lucid on PhoneDog.com. Keep it locked right here. PhoneDog.com. I'm going to zoom in so you can see it even closer. Keep it locked right there on the dog. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash phone dog, and head over to those rankings. Cast your vote for your favorite smartphone at phone dog.com slash rankings. Follow me on Twitter as well, phone dog underscore Aaron, and on Facebook at facebook.com slash phone dog AB. Is that not the coolest widget you've ever seen? I really like the dialer widget. I think that's probably the most useful thing I've seen in some time uh, on Android in terms of the widget department. Much more coverage to go on the Lucid, so stay tuned to phone dog.com. We'll see you next time.